Hello and welcome to edupediaworld.com. In this session, we'll be continuing by discussing about the long-run cost-output relations. As compared to the short run, long run is defined as a time period in which all the factors of production becomes variable. So in the long run, if a producer wants to increase his output, he has to increase upon all the factors of production. If you remember, the short run cost output relation was basically a relationship between the output and the variable factors of production. But in the long run, because there is no bifurcation as such that some factors are fixed and some factors are variable. So in the long run, the cost output is a relationship between the quantity produced and all the factors of production. Now let's see how do we determine the various types of cost curves in the long run. To understand the long run cost output relation and to derive the long run cost curves, it will be very helpful to imagine that a long run is made up of series of short run production decision. With this perception in mind of long run cost output relation, now I will show you that how long run cost curve is derived and what is the relationship of the long run with the output. We'll draw a graph in order to depict that. On X axis, I take the quantity. On Y axis, I take the total cost. Now suppose the firm introduces only one plant into the production process. So we get a short run cost curve like this, STC1. Now I am taking into consideration only the variable short run cost curve because in the long run, all the factors of production are variable. So we will be taking into consideration only the short run variable cost curves. Now, after some time period, the firm introduces another plant into the production process. So we get another short run cost curve that is STC2. After a time frame, again the firm introduces one more plant into the production process and again we get another short run cost curve that is STC3. Now how do we get a long run cost curve? What we are going to do is we will join the minimum points of all the short run curves in order to get the long run cost curve. These are the minimum points of all the short run curves. So we get a long run cost curve by joining the minimum points of all the cost curves. So this is a long run cost curve. I will darken this so that we can bifurcate between the short run cost curve and the long run cost curve. This is long run total cost curve. So this is how we make the long run total cost curve by joining the 
short run total cost curves the minimum point of short run total cost curves because long run is made up of a series of short run so that is why we make the various short run cost curves and make the long run cost curve with the help of the short run cost curves likewise we can also get the long run average cost curve and long run marginal cost curve let's see how on x axis i take the quantity and on y axis i take the total cost now again for different plants i get different short run average cost curves and i will join the minimum points of average cost curves in order to get the long run average cost curve this is my long run average cost curve this was short run average cost curve 1 this was short run average cost curve 2 and this was short run average cost curve 3 and by joining the minimum points of short run average cost curve i get a long run average cost curve likewise we can also make the long run average cost curve and long run marginal cost curve short run curves on x axis i take the quantity and on y axis the average cost now for different plants and different time periods we get different short run average cost curves we get the minimum points of the average short run average cost curve this is sac1 this is sac2 this is sac3 we join the minimum points of the short run average cost curves in order to get the long run average cost curve likewise we can also draw the long run marginal cost curve we draw the different short run marginal cost curve we take the minimum points of short run marginal cost curve and we draw a long run marginal cost curve by joining the minimum points of short run marginal cost curve this is smc1 this is smc2 short run marginal cost curve 2 and this is smc3 short run marginal cost curve 3 and this darken curve is the long run marginal cost curve so this is how we get the long run total cost curves and long run marginal cost curve long run average cost curve by joining the different short run average total and marginal cost curves now the long run average cost curve is also known as the planning curve or an envelope curve because this curve basically helps an entrepreneur to determine that whether he should expand his plant or not short run curves basically helps in showing how a firm can decide on the optimum utilization of the resources so if we talk about short run curves 
it helps in deciding optimum utilization of resources whereas the long run curves helps in deciding that what should be the optimum size of the firm this helps in deciding that what should be the level of production this helps in deciding that what should be the scale of production see when lse curve reaches a quantity of production of oq2 this is a point where the average cost is at its minimum so this is the point where the producer can maximize his profits at this particular point so that is why it's very important to study the long run cost curves so in this session we have studied about the long run cost output relations and how we determine the long run cost curves with the help of the short run cost curves in the next session we will be starting with economies and diseconomies of scale which are related to the scale of production till then have a nice time and thank you for watching atupedia world